in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the September 21st meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as one requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Regino if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Regino, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum in the committee. Okay. Mr. Kuhn? Here. Ms. Hen? Here. Ms. Causey? Here. Mr. McMillian? Here. Mr. Offerman? He said he wouldn't be attending today. Okay. Um, could you please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting? Absolutely. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Tantliff? Mr. Tantliff? He's on mute. Here. Okay, if there's are any additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so we're going to start with new business, uh, the potential supplemental appropriation funding of bargaining unit agreements. Um, Mr. Tantliff, could you please review uh, this document that's attached to board docs? It's called the potential supplemental appropriation funding. Um, I also uh, just to I, I don't know if you've seen my email, but it, it looks yeah. like a document wasn't attached, and that's the um, the letter to the county executive. When we get to that point, I will just share it. Uh, it should have been added. It was provided, uh, and we can and you can talk to that a bit. So let's sure. start start with this now. Thanks. Um, sure. So um, actually, I was going to go through the uh, five year chart that was uh, attached to the superintendent's letter to the county executive and then um, if the committee wants i can also go through um, how we came up with the five-year cost for the bargaining uh, units the amount that needed to be covered so if that's agreeable mr kuhn i'll that's fine I, can you put it up you... so we can see it yeah i'm doing it right thanks So this is just an Excel version of uh, the chart that um, Mr. Kuhn sent around. It was um, got left out of board docs by mistake, but it was also, uh, I think, sent to the board by the superintendent and has uh, been attached to articles in the press. So I'll uh, just walk you through how it works and then you can ask questions and then if you'd like to go to the five-year summary of the salaries we can do that so uh, and I'll, I'll do it there's a lot here so i'll just kind of hit the highlights and then we can go as deep as you all may want to so all first we've uh, built some models to project what our revenue is going to look like next year and our revenue is largely based on uh, enrollment so if our enrollment grows our revenue grows so for purposes of this model we projected um we we can uh that did go in excel miss hen just asked if it's in excel i think the the ce's uh the letter to the ce included an excel version of it um or we can post it but so based on enrollment we're projecting to grow by 1500 we don't know where we're going to land the actual official projections were 3000 but for this we used 1500 
um, you can see it looks like we're actually dropping by 350 and that's because the blueprint legislation says we can use the higher of this year or a three year average and our three year average is still higher because 2018 will drop off and 2022 will come on. So for purposes of state aid, if this is where we come out, it'll look like we're dropping by 350 students and then it'll stabilize by 2025. Uh, so we go through and do all our projections based on all the new formulas and blueprint. Um, uh, now the county, this assumes county funding is flat uh, as far as MOE goes uh, right here. Let me just freeze this. Um, and the 33.6 uh, in the end was how much uh, we felt the county would need to contribute to make this whole thing foot uh, based on everything else we thought we could um, cut and add to revenue. Uh, fund balance, we're assuming that instead of 31 million we've added, we've used an extra 15 million of fund balance. Uh, and if the board remembers, the original proposal for the roughly 50 million to fund all of the compensation changes was about 50 million, 36 million of that is ongoing, and that was all coming from fund balance. Um, we're not using fund balance for that now. The proposal here is mostly going to be using the ESSER grant, and then fund balance will run down. So we we'll use 15 million extra, 15 million extra, um, 5 million extra, and then we are back down to what we've been using the last several years, which is about 31.3 million. Um, in this um, model, uh, we give all employees a salary step in 24 and tw all four years, they get a new salary step. The restructuring carryover uh, is what the board uh, voted to send forward to the county executive. Almost 35 million of that um, is ongoing costs, so it's not covered by the one time funding. So we'll need to cover that next year. And then only half of the year of COLA is funded in the adopted budget this year. And again, to get that back to July 1st, which is what the one thing the county exec has agreed to. Um, we will need to find 11 million in the budget. Now, the implication under normal circumstances is the CE obviously knows that that 11 million needs to be covered because he only funded it for half a year. And uh, just to remind everyone, um, once it's in our budget on an ongoing basis, that becomes our baseline and the change is what we need to find for the next year. So since this would all be funded with one time money, we still need to find it for one year. Um, uh, we uh, started an initiative this year where there are full time subs in all the elementary schools. And if we continued that program, uh, which we certainly may not, but if we continued it, we would need to put it in the budget at about four and a half million dollars. Um, and then these five million, four million, for FICA, uh, these are just projected healthcare inflation and FICA on the raises that we're proposing up here. And OPEB is our uh, the the pool that the county funds to pay for retiree health benefits, and that's for all employees from the county, whether they are in the state pension or the county pension. They have said we're going to need to increase that by seven million dollars a year. Um, the bill that we're paying, so that's in the budget. The superintendent has proposed or committed to if the CE agrees his proposal, he will cut expenditures by 16 million and we can go back and talk a little bit about that. Um, we have a modest amount of built in costs, only four million dollars. And as a reminder, built in is just our contractual inflationary obligations. So it's either ongoing multi year contracts with inflation or it's our projected energy costs, inflation or rent inflation or deflation as the case may be. But right now we have a very modest amount in here and 
uh, as we get into the budget process, these numbers firm up because each of the offices provide a detailed justification for their built-in. But right now, we were just looking at trends and and plugging some numbers in that you know are a good starting point. But this number would definitely change as we get into the budget process. And then there was a modest amount of A4 or new requests. Um, during uh, the end of year process, you may uh, recall, although it didn't all get approved, didn't get approved by the council, we still went ahead, we, even without the budget appropriation transfer originally getting approved, we had enough money to add display panels to the classrooms and the board, uh, if you recall in the spring, approved a new contract for that. So we will just have to cover year two of uh, the display panels and you know in the big scheme of things it's a pretty modest cost but that was a five year obligation um, full day classroom will expand and that generates revenue the following year um, but we do have are, are projecting to add several full day classrooms either conversions or new classrooms and so that right now just has a very modest three million dollars um, startup is uh, just just our cost for the new school and uh, uh, one time costs associated with the per pupil of uh, opening up the new school. So when all that uh, comes down, this budget is in balance. We're at a zero uh, shortfall situation, which would be 3.7% over MOE. And again, uh, if you want to think of it, everything we couldn't find or our short shortfall, our only choice in this model was to plug it into maintenance of effort. So the county exec, uh, you all probably know, has said in public that he will fund at least 10 million over MOE, which is only 1.1% and is a very modest amount over MOE, particularly because he's in, we're increasing our OPEB cost by 7 million. And that's because it's been underfunded in the past. So that basically absorbs the 10. But what we're saying is um, at 33.6 million this year foots using 36 million of ESSER dollars one time to cover the FY23 portion of the ongoing costs and then uh, covering in the out years uh, through various funding sources. Uh, the only difference in the the other years really is there's a big bulge over in year two. So uh, we do grow by a thousand students. You'll see state A doesn't go up by that much. Uh, that's a quirk in the blueprint formula. And in FY25, everything's based out of what they call the foundation uh, portion of the grant. And what drives all the blueprint increases is that everything's a percent of foundation for the most part and that increases significantly each year but for whatever reason in legislation 25 has a very small increase um, because you'll see in 25 and 26 um, you know we have 45 to 50 million dollars of projected increases and this doesn't include the concentration of poverty grant which is really growing fast because we have all of that in special revenue and that is very restricted in its use and in which schools it can be used at, very similar to Title I in that regard. But because we have um, all the fall offs in the ESSER grant, so here's extended day, and this doesn't include inflation. I mean, um, it doesn't include benefits. Fringe benefits are captured below. So, um, the ESSER 15 minutes in the day is the 33 million in here. Um, temp employees this year got $4 an hour. That's three and a half million. Subs got $4 an hour. That's 5.3 million. Uh, add, you know, uh, fringe benefits, which is captured down below. And that's what's causing basically the, the county to have such a big bulge in what we would ask of them in FY25. It's really to cover the fall off and the ESSER grant. 
Um, and the county executive was obviously aware of the 15 minutes because if you may or may not recall, but in his FY22 budget message, well, let me step back. The board added funding for the 15 minutes to the budget, the general fund. The CE did not fund that, but he agreed and actually says in his message that the 15 minutes will be supported by federal funds, you know, the ESSER grant. So, you know, interpret that as you will, but that was a uh, uh, clearly noted in his message. So, but that doesn't have to continue, but I think everyone expects it to continue because the 15 minutes is now part of the salary tables. It's not an add on or anything else. We're funding it through ASSER through a fairly, um, well, I'll just say we have a process where we're calculating how much the 15 minutes are. And each month uh, we move that money onto the ESSER grant, but to the teachers, that's invisible. It's all in the salary tables. So, but let me stop here and, um, you know, answer any questions you may have. Mr. Tantliff, Mr. Ms. Hen has a question. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. Um, so in the county's FY23 budget analysis, and I don't know if you have that handy, Mr. Tantliff, but um, it's page nine. They reference the increase in state aid largely attributable, attributable to Blueprint um, beginning in FY23 of 55.9 million. Mm -hmm. And prior to um, the ESSER um, funds expiring um, as being unrestricted and um, good, flowing right into the general fund for use and mentioned that that those are ongoing and available mm -hmm. for use. So I'd like to know one, how those are currently being used, if that can offset any of um, the, the ESSER funds that are expiring and where that fits into this five-year plan, if you could speak to that. Um, sure, well, let me open up something so all of those state funds they're referring to were all used to balance the operating budget. You know, revenue equal equals expense. So what we have in the FY23 operating budget includes, um, you know, all of the revenue from the state that we got through ESSER. So um, if we just go to the executive summary of the budget book, now this is the actual, just our Word document. It was easier for me to get. Let me share it. So this is uh, at the back of the executive uh, summary. Uh, so Ms. Han, if you look at all of the things that we did this year, and we did quite a bit, we added a lot of new positions. Um, we had significant compensation increases. All of these things um, are supported by uh, the revenue in uh, Blueprint. So if we look at, uh, I don't have it right here. I need to open it up. But um, here, let me. So again, what we're saying here is here's our all our new initiatives are equaling $91.5 million. That's how much new expense we absorbed in the FY23 budget. It was 63 million in salaries and 29 million in non-salary. It equals 91 million, so it was not inconsequential. Um, and then if we look at Revenue, if you uh, want, I can pull up uh, our revenue really quick. Let me think the best thing to do here. But in any case, Ms. Hen, uh, I can pull something up while we're talking, but it's all been absorbed to balance the budget. So everything you've seen and talked about in the FY23 budget used our increase in state revenue to go towards that 90 plus million that I just showed you. And not in, and for ongoing, not one time. 
cost. So that, yes, that well, go sure. Yes, it's all in our operation. Uh, hold on, I think I have what I wanted to show you, but it's all in our operating budget. So blue, remember, blueprint is just the new state funding formula. There's restrictions and mandates along with it, but um, once it's in our budget, it's in our budget. So if you look at the state general fund, uh, this one doesn't have a subtotal, but you can see we have a pretty big increase from, can you guys still see my share? We cannot. Okay, sorry, hold on. Okay, here we go. So this is in the budget book. <clears throat> so if you look at here's state funding, so uh, county funding, in the general fund went from 889 to 918. So it went up pretty significantly by about $30 million. Uh, state funding overall uh, went up by about, you know, 50 million. And most that's mostly all the general fund. It's actually about 55 because special revenue dropped. But this all includes the blueprint money. So you can see foundation went up significantly, compensatory ed stayed pretty flat, uh, limited English went up by 10 million, et cetera. So, uh, you know, when you add all this, uh, this is all just going into the general fund, special fund, et cetera. So the amount uh, they're noting, you know, is simply the amount of money in the general fund. If blueprint hadn't increased it and state funding only went up by half that amount, Either the county would have had to provide more in the budget to if they wanted to fund all the initiatives this year, or more likely, they wouldn't have supported all the initiatives in the budget. We might have gotten less positions. We might have gotten less of a salary increase. But, you know, over the next decade, Blueprint is projected to significantly increase the amount of revenue coming in. But we can't lose sight that there are many mandates coming in with that increase in revenue. So it's not it's not all discretionary. So although we're receiving that increase in state funding, we're not using that towards items that would add to MOE because of the spending affordability guidelines. Well, that MOE only <laughs> talks about county funding. So however much state funding increases or doesn't increase, um, MOE is strictly how much money the county gives us. So there's a required amount, that's maintenance of effort, and then there's a the amount above maintenance of effort that the county can fund. So if the state funds more, either we can, either the county, you know, whatever the county executive and the council decide they want to fund, you know, it's in conjunction with the amount of sta state funding that's available. But in terms of what we can use those those state funds for, um, well, it's already used in our budget, which means everything in the budget is accounted for next year because it's in our base. It's it's this year's funding. So the only thing that really is important for this discussion is next year. How much is it going to increase by? And we're not projecting that in FY twenty four. Um, it could increase more. Listen, this early in the process, we have pretty detailed models we've built, but there's some factors in there like wealth that are hard to, to know because it's your wealth relative to every other um, county in the in the state. Um, but our what we feel is a center cut is uh, only going to produce about 25 million more in state aid next year and that's what's available to cover what we're talking about here our ongoing costs our new ongoing costs um, Ms. Causey, i know you had um you had a question thank you um thank you mr kuhn uh and thank you mr tantliff for this very important discussion um about how to appropriately compensate our employees uh, for recruitment, retention, and to increase achievement for our students. Uh, when you speak about the blueprint, the additional funding, but it's restricted, 
how much of that funding is supposed to be set aside for compensation that could um, support what the board and the superintendent have uh, been trying to do for uh, our employees since February? Um, there's nothing in the legislation that says this much of any of the grants within Blueprint are specifically for compensation. The only, the only at a high level, the only thing really addressed, it talks about ways to spend the money, which are largely going to be compensation, but doesn't talk about compensation increases or anything like that. It talks about the types of things that should be spent, but the only hard and fast thing in there in terms of compensation is teachers, a brand new teacher needs to make $60,000 by July 1st, 2026, which is FY27. Uh, Mr. Tantliff and committee members, I need to step away momentarily and I've asked Ms. Hen to run the meeting while I step away. Uh, sure. All right, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I guess what's still unclear is how much of that funding we could then use for the compensation um, that the board and the superintendent have been uh, trying to accomplish. This year or next, 23 or 24, Ms. Quasi? Both, because- Well, okay. Well, 23, every dollar in our budget is accounted for with the baseline budget that move forward. The baseline budget that the C that we this that the council adopted, you know, included a 3% mid-year COLA, it included steps, and it included a modest AFSME restructuring, uh, and as well as all the new positions and initiatives are in the budget. So the budget is exactly in balance right now. Uh, now, of course, if we do uh, the restructuring, some of that money goes towards it, and that's been accounted for in the amount of money we're saying we need. But for instance, um, AFSME wouldn't get a COLA because of the uh, percent that their contract would be going up. So that goes towards that. But the net cost is the 49, you know, the 49.6 million here. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And also when you were speaking to uh, initiatives that were approved um, and the board uh, supporting a request for a contract for, excuse me, for spending authority for display panels to classrooms. Um, there was Promethean, but there was also another um, vendor that was included in that spending authority. Has there been any evaluation for this and other um, goods um, where we could find a, a lesser cost um, option or to um, slow the rollout of those uh, so that we could uh, shift funding to compensation for employees? Um, I can't uh, speak to that, Ms. Quasi. I think we would need to have um, the IT team speak to that or follow up on that if you'd like to submit that question to the superintendent. Okay, consider it submitted. <laughs> okay. You can follow up yeah, in writing. I'll hold for now. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's, it is easier if you do follow up in writing. Sure. Thank I'll, you. Uh, I'll facilitate that. I'll um, pause. I'll Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Mr. McMillian. Sure. Mr. Witt, I, I'm trying to understand this process that you go through. Uh, when we sat down, when the county executive invited Ms. Hen and Mr. Kuhn and I to sit down, uh, I actually sat in the room with his staff and his financial people and his support people. Have you had that opportunity to, to sit down and, and work with them? Or is this something that you and your staff do in your setting and then you share it with Dr. Williams and then it goes straight to the county executive, and then he evaluates it and comes back. How's that work? Uh, well, in the, in the the normal scheme of things, uh, we have the budget office at the county that we have constant communications with as we're building the budget. They ask us questions, we answer questions, um, we get any feedback we can from them. Uh, this this situation, however, 
it was a little different. I mean, the contracts were negotiated. Uh, we provide the costing for that. Um, then the board, uh, you know, I think had closed session. There was back and forth and you voted on the contract. I can't uh, confirm what conversations went on, at, you know, at a high level between the county um, and BCPS, you know. Um, so I, I, I can't really answer that uh, particular question, maybe to your satisfaction, Mr. McMillan, but my my interactions are, you know, with BCPS and with the budget office over there. It certainly is not with the CE. OK, and, and then lastly, I'm curious, uh, and this might sound really simplistic, but are you happy with this plan? I mean, are you satisfied that that we've we've picked the fruit off the trees or whatever, you know, to solve this problem that he's presented back to us? Thank you. Um, I think this is a viable plan. Um, whether uh, the bargaining units in the end feel it's a viable plan in the out years, you know, I can't say because this uh, assumes the TABCO restructuring does not continue. It only is funded for this year, 23. And uh, the only way to make it foot is although we provided steps, we could not uh, fund any call is for any bargaining units in 24 or 25, and then it has uh, a modest call in 26 and 27. Um, so if this but if this proposal was accepted, it's a reasonable and probably the best option to fund that. Did you want to add anything to that, Chris? Sure. No, I, 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 I agree. I think, you know, we were we were trying to strike a balance. Um, we did we did look for reductions. Um, we did request uh, revenue from uh, additional revenue uh, from the county. So it was a it was a um, it was a balance. Um, and, you know, in the. This is a very unique as Mr. Tantliff was saying earlier, this is a very unique situation because we have a budget for the for the current year. Um, we're out of cycle with this uh, with what we're doing here. So I, you know, I caution that these are not budgets that we put forward. These are just uh, it's a pro forma. So it's not a plan because we haven't had any real meetings with directors and uh, with uh, chiefs and the whole process that that uh, Witt and, and his team go through. We haven't we're just just starting that for the 24 budget year. Um, but it, given the parameters that we have, a negotiated agreement that we're trying to fund um, and you know trying to kind of strike that balance of maintaining our system at a high level, but also funding the negotiated agreements. I think we did the best job we could we could do in those with those um, parameters. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, I have a follow up and and I apologize in advance if it seems like I'm asking a redundant question to Mr. McMillian and Mrs. Causey, um, but it's it's slightly different. And that is when the board passed um, our amended version of this budget. There was a motion made to prioritize um, our agreements with our collective bargaining units in in that. So should the county executive return the budget and cuts be made, which as we know happened, um, that we would prioritize our agreements and make the reductions as needed to honor those agreements. And that was um, months ago now, right? At that at that time. Is that work that had begun at that point, or did we start to look at reductions at that point? And I know it's it's an extremely laborious process, um, but to honor the board's intent, because that that was our intent in um, when we first passed our amended budget request. Well, Is that something I, I, you can address? I would just say once the year starts, 
it's really, really difficult to try to make substantial budget cuts. I mean, you could keep vacancies open, but you can't restructure things. You really can't stop spending that you've committed to. So from a practical standpoint, and we're talking about $35 million here, to cut $35 million out of our budget, you know, would be really, it's an unimaginable amount of money. You can divide it by the total budget and say it's only a few percent, but when you really get down to brass tacks, the pool of money, once you once you set aside people, once you set aside our built-in or contractual obligations and contractual inflation, um, you're, and you just, you take out all the school money like per pupil, what's left in the, and you take out IT expenses, what's left in the central office is a pool of about $15 million. Um, and it, it there's not money uh, sitting uh, that's easily obtainable on a large scale like this. Um, so you can see we have 16 million plugged in here. Um, and there's some ideas the superintendent, uh, you know, we've discussed with him, but to find 16 million, um, some of it will be easier to find, but some of it uh, will be difficult and it may, you know, come out of a different place than we've envisioned right now. But it's once the budget year starts uh, to have a significant cut is uh, it's just very, very difficult unless you, you know, did some massive people thing in the middle of the year. And and just and to add to that, Ms. Head, when we did, I, I remember very specifically that when we had those discussions with the board okay. and we did take that forward to this to the county when we uh, when we presented the budget that we, yeah. you know, and um, then we then we we wait and we see what we end up getting through the process. Um, and what we got through the process was, you know, depending on how you would look at it, it was either, you know, glass half empty or glass half full. We we there was dollars in there for a raise, but it wasn't the raise that we were, you know, it wasn't as much as as we had uh, we had hoped. But at that point, we're very late in the process. You know, it's it's uh, and. Um, and that's when we started having our discussions about where where do we go from here, you know. And that's and then over the summer we've we looked at things, and that's how we came up with this plan. Sure, and and I realize that thirty five million is not something that's that's easily found or easily reduced. At the same time, if we're looking year over year, we saw the fifty five point nine million increase in state aid that is unrestricted. It was um, used for discretionary purposes and that we did not have in, in the year prior. So if we're, we're talking about um, keeping the lights on, that is the revenue source that we did not have the, the year prior. So I'm, I'm just to, to Mrs. Causey's point, um, wondering why that could not be used towards the board's priorities, which was compensating our our employees. Uh, well, the that positions was that got added uh, were part of your priorities and it funded a call and a step. Um, it funded inflation. It's, you know, what I showed you earlier. So I guess if, if I showed you the plan, um, A, once it's adopted, it's, it would be very difficult to then make a significant change. You know, it's, I'm just, I would just be repeating what I just said, because once it's adopted to find those kind of dollars, I mean, forget how much the state aid was for a second, but just all that matters is what we funded in the budget. So the question would be, what wouldn't you want to fund in the budget? And could you even grab any of that once the, once the year begins. Um, so like when I, here, I'll just share it again, just as a reminder, this is what the state aid is paying for. You know, so I mean, just look, look I'm not gonna read through the line items, but you can uh, see what's here. And we had a $6 million reduction in devices, um, but here's the big hitter. 
we put 68 million into compensation and benefits. That is basically, in a simple sense, that's where all the state aid went. It covered our compensation that we did do because uh, the cost of living was significant because we had a new call. Uh, plus we had the overlap from the prior year because it was a mid-year. We had steps. So just these two things together were over $40 million. So um, you look at all the things in here, this is where the money is. It is compensation for our people. We have inflation and benefits, which actually was pretty moderate. Um, we did the Kelly contract, et cetera. But this right here is where the money is. And then, you know, we, we add, did add new positions um, mostly up here, but that's, you can see it's not most of the money. The net here, I mean, there's 6 million offset, but the most of the positions right here are about $9 million. The money is right here. It was compensation uh, changes. So, you know, I'd say again, uh, Ms. Han, if you look at all these things, what in of this 92 million in here, which, you know, two thirds of it was from the, st the increase in state aid, what are the things you wouldn't, we wouldn't do? At a high level, it seems to make sense, but, you know, when, when you put the rubber to the road, um, we put a lot of money in compensation increases without being able to do the restructurings that you asked. The number was really, really high with the restructurings. Hope that helps. It does help, and and seeing it side by side, perhaps with with and without the state aid would be helpful in terms of what we requested from the county. Because where I'd like clarity is on what will be funded um, and by whom moving forward, and understanding the impact on MOE, and also understanding the impact on. Um, the affordability spending affordability guidelines and if there is or isn't any impact on on moe because it it seems like things are shifting somewhat with the um state's funding formula and that's where um, the board could use some clarity on so however you can assist us with that clarity would be very helpful because things seem to be shifting under blueprint um which makes sense right we, we could just use some some guidance there. Okay, um, so Mr. Kuhn did have to drop, um, so he's asked me to continue the meeting without him. Um, thank you, Mr. Kuhn. And I see that Mrs. Causey has a question. Mrs. Causey? Thank you, Ms. Hen, and thank you for this um, important discussion. Um, I would like clarification uh, from staff that um, whatever the next steps forward are, my understanding is if our bargaining units uh, do not find them acceptable, there is a process uh, called impasse. And what would that, um, if they could clarify what that process is and what the possible outcomes are. We had a similar situation last year. So if they want to use last year as an example, that may be, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, so, Ms. Kelsey, yeah. I don't know if this is the right um, forum yeah. to have that discussion or that we have the right staff here to address yeah, I was that. Good, I was going to say we're not really, I wouldn't want to go out too far. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but enough to be dangerous and probably to put some bad information out there. So I think um, it's a very good question, but we're not the right people to ask. Okay. Because so what, maybe, what the, the, maybe the one thing we could just say, Chris, is that there's two steps. One is there's a facilitator who tries to get the two sides to come to an agreement. And then if they can't, then it goes to arbitration and each side presents, you know, their argument. They get the feedback from the negotiator and then a decision is made based on all the information they have. Uh, Anne Arundel just went through that process. It was in the paper recently. Yeah, the, Last I mean, first, year, we never got to impasse. We just got to the first step, the negotiations. The The first step would be to go back to the table. That's yeah. the first step. And then if uh, hopefully you come to an agreement and you're done. Um, if you can't if you can't come to an agreement, that's when you go to the next step. You have to bring in um, a mediator and or an arbitrator 
arbitrator and then you have that process and and that's the that's the actual impasse price process okay uh because as it pertains to this discussion about where do the funds come for come from to cover the priorities that the board and the superintendent have stated and um you know made actions where would those funds come from if uh if our any of our units went in that direction i mean i think it, trying to find a solution that fulfills the obligation that the board has made with the bargaining units is the goal and i'm i'm i don't pretend to have all of the uh, accounting principles down mm -hmm. to understand all of you know the projections that I appreciate Mr. Tantliff and the staff and how complicated all that is uh but you know we really need in my personal opinion to find a way to make this work other districts have done it for their employees and it is uh critical to our students to have the staff that's needed to support their education so I'm um, <clears throat> very concerned and that's all well, for now. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we have put the plan, you know, right now we are waiting to have our meeting with the, uh, with the county and we'll see where it goes from there. And it was on the schedule yesterday, but it got canceled because of the, you know, situation with the package. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Um, Committee members. No, thank you. OK. Thank you all. Um, so the other part of this, if you. Um, let's well go. What did you have? What were Mr. you going to send? Go ahead. Oh, did you have um, anything further on this item? No, the only other piece of this item that was in board docs was just showing you how the five years add up to the $505 million that the county executive had been um, quoting. Uh, you know, so we can show, you know, we can do a brief walkthrough on that. It's pretty, pretty easy to follow, or we can move on, whichever you prefer. Um, yes, please, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Walking us through that. Sure. Uh, so what we have here, um, and I think the board has seen all or part of this in the past, what we basically did, uh, copy this. here's the all the costs from the bargaining units for 23, adds up to the 49.6 million that you've seen. And since only um, a small part of it is funded with one time money, the uh, July 1st COLA, that doesn't continue through because that's one time. But all these other expenses, this is a simple model. It's it's not inflationary. Um, it just tries to demonstrate the point. So the AFSCME contract would be 10.2 million. Until you fund it one time, it's unfunded in all the years. So this is showing kind of a five year look uh, and we and we picked five years because that's how long the tabco restructuring went and that's most of the money that was approved by the board so you can see ask me is about uh for this period it's 41 million case is a modest 2 million here's tabco though because the restructurings are cumulative you're uh adding you're getting rid of a step moving everyone a step and then you're advancing everyone a step so that money carries through every year and it becomes a really big unfunded number over the five year period so you can see over 24 to 27 that's 384 million so in other words the commitment the board made to tabco just after FY23 
just for the cost of the restructuring, um, that will uh, be a cost of approximately $384 million to the system over the four years of FY24 to FY27, or $403 million over the five-year period. Um, you can see OPE, which had a restructuring, it's 1.2 million a year, so that carries through. ESPBC had a two-step reduction in their scale, so that's a little more expensive, and that carries through. And so when you add all that in versus our baseline today, so again, this assumes our baseline budget from compensation standpoint, everything we're paying for today is paid for in the future um, because it's in our base. This is how many extra dollars we'll need to find over the next four years, 450 million or 505, including this year, to cover uh, the bargaining unit changes um, that we're talking about. Any questions? That's you know a, a quick summary of it. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. And, and partly the difference is in numbers, I would imagine, because of the sheer number of TABCO. Oh, members. well, it's, but if it's you, the biggest change with the okay. biggest people. With the, it's by far our highest salary base, yes. But it's also a dramatic change in their in the structure of their contract sure. or their salary tables. And thank you for scrolling down to to look at TABCO. Um, questions, committee members? Okay. No, thanks. Um, okay. That was all we had on the first agenda item, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Mrs. Causey, did you have a question? I see you typing in the chat yes, on this Ms. item. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate your request for clarity in terms of funding, state, county, MOE, and compensation. And I would also, this question also ties into having a clear understanding of the requirements on the school district for blueprint because how much of the increases in compensation uh, fulfill the requirement of a minimum salary of sixty thousand dollars for teachers for instance so how many of those other requirements in blueprint for additional compensation are covered in what the board is requesting versus what is the board asking on top of that? And I believe we'll be talking about that on the next agenda item. Is that correct, Mr. Tantliff? Uh, the next agenda item uh, is really just showing you uh, through some MSD There's documents how our salary currently stacks up, current being last year, how it stacks up to the rest of the state for teachers. Okay. Thank you. Then is that something we can address in terms of the future requirement for um, teacher salary blueprint? Uh, we can't do it specifically, but we can say that uh, the plan that, that Mr. Tantliff just went through would more than um, mm -hmm. uh, reach the sixty thousand uh, dollar a limit, and 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 uh, there would be dollars over and above that at the end of the at the by the time the the 60,000 is is due. So it would it, it would it would uh, more than more than satisfy that requirement. But as far as the I got your question Ms. Ms. Causey was the breakdown between how much would go towards that and how much would be above we without a more thorough analysis we couldn't give you those numbers right now. But okay, it's fair thank you. Thank you. A portion of that would would certainly be required. Yeah. Um, yep. There's no doubt. We there are certain things we're going to have to do anyway. And you you are exactly right that there is that there is that that uh, requirement out there that we're going to have to get whether we do it this way or another way. Which is intended to be offset or um, funded through the increased um, funding provided by Blueprint. It, Exactly, exactly. At least in part, I mean, what the state will tell you is, is the blueprint is a shared responsibility. So it's it would be partially blueprint and partially local funding. Yes. OK, is that an, an analysis that the board could receive 
at at some point to understand the the incremental um, difference in what we have approved versus what would would be required with the minimum I salary. I certainly I, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I I'm not completely clear on the question, but <clears throat> what really the board's doing by approving this is you you moved up the funding from out years to the current years. So the plan on the pro forma that we showed you basically gets us, as, as Mr. Hartlove mentioned, to $60,000 in five years or by 2026, July 1st. But doing the restructuring with colas every year would be well above that. Um, so the pro forma again, freezes the restructuring after 23. It doesn't do years two, three, four, or five, and it doesn't have colas in year one and two. And that based, and we're basing it on what our best estimate of what blueprint revenue will be. And you can, if you recall, we had some significant asks of the county, at least in 24 and 25, you know, to cover this, uh, to help cover this and to cover the fall off in Esser. But the um, county funding, if you look in the out years, was fairly modest. Um, so, you know, there could be more room to do things in those years. But if you look just right here uh, for the county, see it's it drops. I mean, we're still, it's still above MOE, but it's, uh, relatively modest, I guess, uh, is what I would say. So to, to thank you um, to clarify the the question I would want to answer is. Could we receive an analysis that compares our ask with this plan versus the anticipated county share of the cost? Were we to have delayed or um, continued along the scheduled implementation of the minimum salary per the um, blueprint. There is, there is no scheduled implementation, so there's lots of ways to skin the cat. So we could have, but maybe this will partially answer it. If we had just kind of gone in our normal process, a step in some negotiated COLA, if you did a couple of 2% and a couple of 3%, that would have got you to 60,000. So, but but there was no agreement on how we were going to get there yet or how we do it. The 15 minutes, by the way, um, that that drives almost 4% towards uh, the 60,000. So if the 15 minutes went away, it would basically need to be put back in. You know what I mean? Because it's in in our base towards 60,000 anyway. Sure. I, I don't I don't really think there's an it. answer to your question, yeah. Miss Hen, but it you know maybe we could let i don't know i'm not i'm not sure how to and do that I, and i had kind of misinterpreted i was thinking we were talking about this the uh the um schedule that we were looking at just before where we had all five five years of the uh um restructuring and i knew that plan took us well above the sixty thousand. yes, 000. yes so yes that was the that was when i was referring to something different now the the so as Mr. Tantliff said, our goal is to get to that to that number. It's not a goal. I mean, that we're going to get to that number we, um, one way or the other. So whether we do it this way or some other way, we're going to get there. And it, I would think the costs just to get to 60, you know, depending on what other things you do, um, they're going to be in some kind of a ballpark, you know, because um, it, it's it's. 60,000, if that becomes our, our, our entry salary, that means the rest of the scale will probably go up by a comparable amount. So you're going to, it's going to be comparable one way or the other. Um, but the original plan that the, the board was discussing took us well above 60. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Causey? You have a question? Oh, thank you. I was just going to, um, make a brief comment uh, the issue about the 15 minutes is uh 
bringing Baltimore County um, student day in line with the rest of the state, and it was requested by the state superintendent um, a couple state superintendents ago. So it was a, uh, it's not some additional thing that uh, Baltimore thank County you. Public Schools is doing. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McMillian, are we good to move on to the next agenda item? Did you have yes, anything? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. And I do see we're we're at time. So um, if if everyone's okay, I don't want to keep anybody past any other obligations. But um, Mr. Tantliff, if if you're good to move on, sir. We are uh, yes. Let me set for the to present the next sure. item, please. Uh, sure. So uh, the the question was, where how do we compare to the rest of the state? So um, this document I'm going to share is available on the MSD website, and it's actually a pretty robust uh, document. Uh, and if you go through it, and this is in board docs, and they update each year, uh, I'm not sure when the FY22 version will come out, and it will in the coming months. Um, and if this restructuring we're talking about gets approved, um, that's such a large increase in the starting salary um, that that will significantly improve where we're sitting. So let me just show you what's in this MSD document. Then we took one chart, which we thought was representative, and we just uh, ranked each of the LEAs in it. So I'll go to that after. So if you go through this, it actually slices and dices all the different types of positions that we have in an LEA. So this first one, superintendent deputies, it's, it's basically the EDs and above. Um, and then you have, different types of professional sort of jobs. Um, now, this doesn't tell you though where your average salary is. All it can give you is the full salary scale, max and min, and that sort of thing. So you can take it for what it's worth. Um, this is 12 month professional positions, and we'll get to the salaries here. Um, here's just the max salary on the scale for these types of jobs. Here's um, uh, the min and max for uh, teachers. So this is the chart right here, which I'll pop to after. And we just, we, we took the chart as is, and we just put a ranking for each of the columns here. So this is the key thing, bachelor's degree step one. This is what we're targeting to get to 60,000. This is what we're always talking about. You know, where do our teachers compare, et cetera, et cetera. This is basically the max bachelors. Um, then here's what you're getting currently with the advanced professional uh, certificate, but it's it's actually only a couple thousand dollars. That um, is one of the things that's gonna be going up this year, FY23 significantly. Uh, the national board certification is now worth 10,000 for everyone and 17,000 if you're at a high need school. Here's max masters, masters plus APC, masters plus 30, masters plus 60 max, and doctorate max. So we thought this chart, it sort of gives a good, it's certainly not comprehensive necessarily, but it gives some good points of reference for the things we've been talking about. And then, um, you know, you can go through these charts uh, at your leisure. They just, they slice and dice it a bunch of ways and it's mostly slicing the teacher salary. So I'm not gonna go through these different charts, um, but uh, you're welcome uh, to use that. Um, what was your question, Ms. Hen? It just popped up, I'm not looking at oh, the chat. Thank you. I was curious to, um, if we know that, was this the source of data that Public Works used in their salary analysis? Or did they survey the LEAs separately? Do we know? Um, no, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay. No, no worries. Okay. So let me. Uh, so now I'm just going to take uh, that table two that I mentioned to you. So again, this is right out of that uh, MSTE. 
uh, books we took and we, all we did was ranks. So this is last year. So you can see teacher salaries in Baltimore just by, uh, let's see, number one is actually Washington County. So they're, they're way up there. But of all the large counties, we have the highest starting salary. We're a little ahead of Baltimore City. You can see, you know, almost the same for argument's sake. Um, number four is Montgomery. So, you know, we're, you know, 500 bucks ahead of Montgomery. PG's only at 50. So we're um, almost 2,000 ahead of PG. So you can see for starting salaries, we're really pretty high. And if the restructuring as proposed goes through, now we don't know all the new salaries in 23 until the um, chart comes out from MSD, but it's just spot checking, we'll, we'll go up over 57,000. So we would be number one um, for new teacher salaries uh, if the board's proposal is approved. Uh, and if you go across here, this is kind of anomaly. This is like your max bachelor's, but as you know, in Maryland, you have to get a master's if you're gonna stay in teaching. So it's really not that meaningful. And all these other um, rankings um, are really for master's and doctorate, kind of your bread and butter seasoned professionals. And we're four, 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 four. Uh, we're three at master's plus 60, you know, probably master's 60 and master's 30. Um, not necessarily the max on the scale, but those are kind of the two bread and butter uh, levels for senior professionals. You know, many, many, many of our teachers have masters and masters plus 30. So you can see uh, we're, we're very competitive uh, right now. Doctorate, we're five. So we're in the top five really in all the different metrics. Um, and some of the smaller counties, there's just some anomalies uh, out there. So let's look just for a second. We go to masters plus 30 where we're number four let's just look real quick at like montgomery's number one so you can see they're ahead howard's number two so uh kind of i guess what you'd maybe expect calvert you wouldn't have expected to be number three um and you know baltimore city's a distant number well they're actually very low in that bucket so uh that's really uh, what we have to present on this topic. We're just kind of showing you the data that's out there and getting you grounded where we stood at the end of last year. Now, honestly, what I'd expect by FY27 is you're going to see a compression from highest to lowest because everyone it's a stretch for everyone to get to 60,000. It's going to be less of a stretch for the big counties, but it's, you know, versus the smaller counties that are only at you know, 48,000, 47, even Anne Arundel's only at 47.8. But you're going to really see the range, uh, certainly on a bachelor's compressed, but that'll bleed through to all the other um, grades and steps because it has to. You have to keep, you know, your distance between steps. So you're going to see a lot of compression here from highest to lowest and from left to right, I think. Not really from left to right, but within each grouping, um, highest to lowest is going to be much closer four years from now. Be glad to take any questions. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? No, thanks. Thank you. Mrs. Causey? Well, thank you. This is very helpful to see the data laid out in this format. Um, so I appreciate you sharing this with us. Sure. And it will be interesting, as you said, to see the changes and and what that means, um, and certainly what it means for us if if our approvals get um, get implemented. I see Mrs. Causey is typing. Mrs. Causey, do you have a question or comment? No, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to um, absorb this information. And so recently we received information from uh, TABCO. And we also received information from um, the county. There was a document that they had uh, presented about uh, 
Baltimore County average salaries and would Mr. Tantliff say that those informations are consistent with what they see on the MSDE website? Well, um, I'd have to look at what ta how Tabco did their calculation, but you know, depending on what, again, we thought this was kind of a center cut, kind of the key metrics and and places in the scale that people talk about. That's why we ranked Table Two. But if you look at that MSD box document that's in board docs, I mean, they slice and dice it a lot of ways. So Tabco, you know, their argument, of course, is they're trying to show that we're lower on the scale and they need a bigger increase. That's their goal, obviously. So they could, I'm sure, pick things that make us look lower on the scale, but I don't know off the top of my head uh, what they picked. I think these numbers more mirror what the CE was has been communicating. Um, but I again, I'd have to look at his uh, exactly where they picked it from too. So they could both be accurate and have just picked different places to stake their ground, so to speak. And and just to add to that, I mean, these, as Mr. Tantler said, there are a lot of numbers out there. And so you can kind of pick and choose uh, if you want to make certain cases. So there is a little bit of danger in this because I don't think it's a, I don't think you can definitely say that uh, one county is, you know, here and one county is there. Um, but you certainly, these indicators, when you start to accumulate them, um, they certainly mean something. You know, you can, you can pick one indicator, like you could just show this one that says that we're 17th, and that would be a true statement. We're 17th at that one place. Um, but I'm sure you could pick another, you know, there were there were quite a few where we were second or fourth. So, um, you know, the, in the generality looks like we're probably, um, you know, we're probably in the top five would be it. But I wouldn't, you know, we're, we're not really, you know, it's not really necessarily our expertise, the, the you know, comparisons of, of, of teacher salaries. But uh, I think the, where we pulled this data from is the, is the they're kind of the state keeper of the data, so um, I think it's a it's a pretty fair uh, representation of where we stand. Yes, I agree. Thank you for that, Mrs. Causey. Um, and I agree as well. There there are conflicting reports, and I had asked about the public works report, um, namely being one, but also the county's own um, audit office and their their budget analysis. Um, the most recent one of the FY23 budget, but also in past years um, mentions, and they, they draw, both reports draw a correlation, and I don't know that this is necessarily one you can draw, but they, both public works and the audit office draw it. Um, they look at salaries and they look at our vacancies um, and in particular make the recommendation of using our fund balance to increase compensation and one-time incentives as a way to address that and point to um, the competitiveness or lack thereof of our salaries and, and specifically point to um, market rates. So, that's why I had asked what data, um, if we knew what data um, these other analysts were using, because certainly there um, are different data points that that could lead to different conclusions. So in looking at this, you wouldn't necessarily draw that um, same conclusion, so. No, and maybe one of the other charts, if you picked, might, you know, inform in a different way. It may, and and certainly other data combined. Again, there's a danger of looking um, exclusively at one data point, but can you necessarily draw that correlation? I don't, I don't know. Any other questions, committee members? Yes. Well, I, Miss Hen, this is Miss Causey. I appreciate this discussion because it is a very complicated. Um, organization, every school district in the state of Maryland, um, the larger ones then just become more complex. Uh, but the the goal is to, um, a goal is to 
ensure that we are compensating our educators and all staff um, in such a way that they feel valued and that we can uh, increase retention and uh, in, increase our recruiting um, success in order to fill all of the vacancies. So um, to that end, Public Works had a lot of uh, analysis and recommendations in addition to compensation um, in terms of working conditions and so forth. So that work also continues. So thank you. Thank you. If there are no further questions, then moving on to the next agenda item. And that is an information item. Um, Baltimore County's legislative budget analysis on the FY 2023 BCPS budget has been provided as an information item. Um, and that is loaded to board docs. Lastly, our announcements. The next budget committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 19, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. And with that, today's meeting has been adjourned. Thank you, everybody, very much. Have a great evening. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Thank Take you very care. much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you.